Jacksonville coming off a huge win at Indy. Meanwhile, Houston still looking for its first win. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horwitz, CBS Sports' is Charlie Casserly. Glad to be with you on the NFL previews presented by Comcast. And Charlie, let's talk about the Jaguars because they ran all over the Colts and have a ton of confidence. But how, how much does that carry over from what, week to week? Well, probably a not, not a lot once you're asked in the first quarter. But I think going into the game, uh, it will carry some confidence uh, because that is a huge win. They've only beaten Indianapolis once in Indianapolis before. They had to come from behind, something they haven't had to do in the past to win at Indy. Uh, Indy thought they had the game won with the great Manning drive at the end. So I think the confidence is big this week in preparation when they start the game. Uh, if they get off slow, it will give them something in the fourth quarter. I think that's maybe where it'll help them. They learned that they can come back and win, and Josh Scobie hit a 51-yard field goal to get the victory. Meanwhile, uh, they ran all over the place, as we said. 100 yards plus for Maurice Jones-Drew, 100 yards plus for Fred Taylor. Can we see that against, against Houston as well? Well, there you can see the stats there. Both of them, 5-6 and 4-7. Uh, outstanding. But, no, Houston has a better run defense than Indianapolis, who is depleted in the defensive line. Uh, but I will say this. A lot has been made, and we made it too, about the Jacksonville offensive line being decimated. Well, they're now starting to play together. So they will improve there. I don't expect for them to run quite as well against Houston as they did last week. But I do expect them to be able to run the ball. It's been a big up and down season for the Texans. Obviously, the week one loss at Pittsburgh, okay, but then you have Hurricane Ike. You're displaced. Everybody's worried about this. They, you know, now they have to go to Jacksonville, 0 and 2, and they haven't looked good. Uh, Matt Schaub, especially, is there a problem there with the with the Texans quarterback? Well, you know, the the thing with Matt Schaub, we're going to look at his stats here. What you want with Matt Schaub, the book on him would be intelligence, decision making, get it out quick, and, and accuracy. All right. Well, 60 percent is okay. Not great for a Matt Schaub. He should be better in a high percentage offense. But right now, you see a guy that doesn't seem to be playing with a lot of confidence. Maybe the rush has gotten to him. He's not making as good a decision as he's made before. He's forcing some balls. You can't have that from Matt Schaub. That's not his game. So he's going to have to get better. Sage Rosenfels is sitting there in the wings. They don't want to go to him. Schaub is their guy. But if he keeps struggling, you know, you may have to see a change. And Sage played well last year when he came in when Matt Schaub was hurt. Meanwhile, maybe something that could help them is the development of a rushing attack, something they haven't had the last couple of years uh, since Dominic Davis's knee injuries and, and all that, that issues. Uh, Steve Slayton, huge game against Tennessee. Can he take the pressure off Matt Schaub? Well, I think he can. And we'll look at his stats here, and you can see it's 5.1. Uh, and but he had, you know, he had a big long run in the in the ball game. They pads it a little bit, but still a very impressive day. Uh, and there you see his stats overall for the season. Now, uh, what he is in this offense, it's what they call a downhill running offense. They want a guy that uh, one cut and go. So it relies upon hitting the hole quickly and aggressively, and that's what he does. Where they came up short is on the goal line. I'm not sure he'll be a great goal line runner, but I think he is a positive for him. But what about in this game? What about against Jacksonville's defense? Can he do that? I think he can because uh, Jacksonville's front is not, to me, nearly as good as the Tennessee front they ran against last week. And, of course, Jacksonville's front no longer has Marcus Stroud. Let's take a look at the AccuScore prediction. 10,000 tests, 10,000 results. 81% of the time in the computer, the Jaguars came out victorious. Now, Charlie, you were with the Texans from their inception until a couple of years ago uh, as the general manager. Always played them tough. Why is that? A and will they somehow figure out a way to win in Jacksonville? Well, I, I, I think we're, um, number one, I'll pick Jacksonville in the game. But I think there was always a matchup situation. T uh, Jacksonville never had the great pass rushes and didn't threaten you with the passing game. I think the key here for Houston is can they get Stop the running plan. Sell out. Get as many people as you have to in the box. Make David Garrard beat you on the outside with the receivers. I think if they do that, they have a chance in the game. On the other hand, Matt Schaub, he's got to start making decisions. They've got to get the ball to their playmakers, which they have at wide receiver and Andre Johnson, Owen Daniels at tight end. They've got to do a better job. If you keep throwing those interceptions, you're not going to do it. I still like Jacksonville at home. Houston, another week on the road, another week recovering from a hurricane. And then they get the bye, and then they return home uh, for uh, their first home game, which actually will happen in October. It certainly has been a very tumultuous season for the uh, Texans and everybody in Houston, uh, not just a football team. The game is a 1 o'clock Eastern start on CBS. And for more on this one or any other in Week 4, be sure to stay with CBSSports.com. Watch everything else on the CBS Audience Network. For Charlie Casterly, I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care, folks.